Hey everybody, this is Anders. I'm Daniel, and you listen to The Age of Metal. Hey guys, this is Elston with the Age Metal. I have here Andres and Daniel of Catonia. How's it going, guys? It's going great. It's pretty good. It's not warm at, at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah so this you, is you, you, equivalent of a sauna for us, but on the outside. Yeah. So it's uh, pretty nuts. But it's you know we're from Sweden, so we're not complaining. That we we never get this kind of weather ever. Right. Yeah. Right. All right. So um, let's talk about the tour. So how's it been so far? It's been uh, long. Very long. Very long, yeah. But it's been fun. Uh, op out with Opeth again. Um, we toured uh, <coughs> North America back in 2011 last time. And mm -hmm. doing it again is like just hanging out with a bunch of friends. Right. Playing yeah. music for a short while every every night. It's just, just, just been fun. Yeah. I, would, I mean, this tour seems to be like, you know, it, it, I mean, as you said, you know, you, you're touring with your best friends, you know, essentially, you know. Um, so, I mean, being that as is me, you know, on tour, are there any antics you guys pull on each other or any pranks? We could pull so much, you know, but we tried to uh, save that for the last show. Right. Uh, we tried to behave, actually. Uh, but, you know, we got to step it up this time because the last, you know, the antic we did on the last tour, it good. kind of backfired almost in a way. It was really, really good, but it backfired because the audience thought it was part of the show. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the intro, yeah. Yeah, like we put on, I don't know if I ever told this, but we put on the, the sign, the theme of Seinfeld, you know, the comedy show, right. uh, as part of Opus intro. Huh. And the audience were just like, okay, cool, wow, that's Mike, he's a stand up comedian anyway. <laughs> so it didn't, you know, it didn't work as we thought it was going to work. So the, the, the crowd couldn't see our. <laughs> Irony in it. Nah, exactly. Right. So we got to do something way more brutal this time, I think. Yeah. Right, exactly. Keep, keep it metal. No mercy. No mercy, right? Physical. <laughs> uh, you guys actually did some uh, headline shows. Uh, I think uh, uh, you did one last night mm -hmm. of the New Mexico. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure about the other one, but uh, how were those were like? Yeah, I mean, we did a couple. Uh, we did one in Canada. We did one in Kansas. Uh, yesterday, New Mexico. Uh, we're gonna do one in LA as well. Okay. So they're just a couple. Uh, they're basically just been put in there when these guys in Opeth have a day off. We go back to work. Yep. So yeah, I know. I mean, it's kind of cool. We we do a, a long, a full headline show for the for the fans who would rather have that than see us support Opeth, but. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's still it's it's been kind of cool because it's like an off territory as well. So uh, you know, like yesterday, we where were we? You know, um, Farmington. 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 It's like it doesn't say anything to me. And uh, it's New Mexico. I mean, yeah, yeah, but you know, we figured that most of the people there they actually travel in from other places anyway. Right. So it's kind of bizarre in a way, but it's uh, it's cool. It was pretty pretty weird last night because. We had probably the smallest crowd ever, ever, ever totally. on, on, on a yeah. on like Atonia show. But in the same time, one of the loudest huh. crowd-wise right. was pretty weird. Yeah. How many people do you think there were? There was uh, 65, I think. 65. Yeah, people. So that's wow. like yeah. nothing, wow. you know. Yeah. But it, it, it turned out really intimate, yeah. and uh, it, it felt more like we were at the cafe, you know, like Ooh. entertaining the, yeah. the people, and they were just went nuts. <laughs> I, I had fun. Sure, I had fun. I had fun as well. It was really cool. Yeah. Uh, you guys actually played uh, the New England Metal and Hardcore Festival. Um, how was that? Like? Yeah, that was probably was that the first show? The second, second, second show. Third, second second yeah. Third, yeah. I don't know if we fit in the bill quite, right. you know, but it was, I mean, some of the bands played that was really cool to watch, like Dillinger's Escape oh, yeah, Plan yeah, yeah. and, like, crazy, yeah. you know, like, we did our thing, it seemed to go down good, but it, I don't know, it's... So many bands, uh, I, I can't um. even... <laughs> 
No. You couldn't comprehend. <laughs> kind of chaotic yeah. uh, day, was evening, night. a long night. time ago. Yeah. Like, like two years ago? That was another tour. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. You guys actually played also with Stephen Wilson. Um, I think one date. Um, how was that like? That was really cool. That was a sold out show. That was also though in the middle of nowhere. The venue was just like... Very strange venue, you know. Like very. totally like a little Walmart out in the wild wilderness. You know? Kind of, and uh, the bill though, wow, the bill's great, you know. It, it's a dream come true for, for a lot of fans because I think Opeth, Catatonis, Dean Wilson, what we do share is, is the fan base actually. Right. So they had a, you know, they really got value for their tickets, yeah. I think. And it's also cool to meet up with Dean Wilson. Doesn't happen that often these days, you know, he's so busy. Yeah. Uh, but it was really cool. Actually, I actually saw him in LA actually recently, so he was really good. Yeah, um, he made me one of the nicest white Russians nice. after after the, the show. Uh, He's moonlighting as a bartender. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I was shocked how good. Yeah. It was. Huh. Well, he's Br- he is British, so you know, makes sense. Uh, yeah. Um, so makes sense. M- moving on uh, to uh, Dead and Kings was released last year, um, and I, I believe actually got. Nominated for a uh, Switch Grammy, mm. I believe. Uh, how was that? Well, we lost it. Oh, we lost it, yeah. Uh, no, we didn't win it. Yeah. Oh, that's I mean, it. Well, that's the correct way. Yeah. Well, you didn't win it, we but you got win. nominated, so. Yeah, yeah. That, that was the win itself. Yeah. I, I told everybody, just being nominated, it's, you know, way enough for me, just like a criteria itself, you know. Uh, we went there on the ceremony. We had a great time. Yeah, we, we found a new fave song out yes. of that whole thing <laughs> that we are playing on our bus every night before we go on show. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a girl, it's a Swedish girl called Elephant. Elephant. Elephant, Elephant yeah. Elephant. And, and her song is called Boom Your Head. Yeah, Boom Your Head. <laughs> it's, it's not what so people good. would expect, but it definitely get us going. Check it out. <laughs> yeah. Elephant. Check it Boom out, definitely. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, I asked you this question, I think, last time I saw you, but Daniel, I actually want to get your opinion about this. You know, you got, I mean, Catcher is known to be right, right, honest, but like very dark lyrics. I mean, what is about the dark that attracts you? Dark music. Attracts me? Yeah, attracts you. I mean, you're in a band. I don't listen to dark music. I only play, play with these guys. Oh, okay. I'm a pretty happy guy. Oh. <laughs> I listen to ABBA and... Cheer, cheerful music. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're on a mission to drag him down with us. Okay. Uh, he just doesn't know about it yet, but we're working on uh, it. It's been 13 years. <laughs> we're, we're not doing a good job. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, I always complain when Jonas plays his, uh, his um, uh, dark playlist on his Spotify. It's like, come on, cheer up. I had enough of this now. The problem is that Jonas puts it on as his party music. Yeah. Right. Party. That's the dilemma here, you know. Uh, I mean, even with me, I of course prefer dark music, but if I want to party, you know, I, I, I uh, of course would prefer probably Daniel's playlist, you know. Right. So, yeah, there we go. No. For being a band, you know, that's been around for such a long time, how do you guys keep the creative juices grow up going? You tell me. I don't even know. I, I have actually no idea how we're doing this. It just it just happens. It it the, what worries me though it just takes longer and longer every time we make an album now. Just you know, it's just harder work. Because we raise the bar by every album and we have made this whole promise to ourselves that we will never put out an inferior album uh, in, in what we think is an inferior album to the last one, then we have to just keep working on that album until we feel it's going to top it, or it's going to at least be equal to it. That's fine as well. But if we feel like, hey, we wow, we just made a new album and it's way worse than the last one, let's release it, it's not going to happen, you know? What's the use, you know? So, that takes longer now, I think, at least three hours, hours, three years, yeah. <laughs> Between albums is what people have to expect these days, you know, right. with Catatonia. In the past, we could release an album every year. Mm-hmm. I actually thought a lot about that because in the 90s, you could see on a discography of a band, you always see like 97, oh, that album, 98, that album, 99, right. that album. That doesn't happen anymore. Exactly, you know? yeah. It's always a gap. Yeah. It also has a lot to do with the touring, obviously. Right. You want to do the touring and support the album, promote it as much as you can. But even if we wouldn't tour, we would still have this three-year gap. You started writing, you know. Right. So, uh, what year is it? 
<laughs> so always, choose, always 2011. <laughs> oh yeah, always 2011. Um, what are your plans after this tour? Uh, summer festivals in Europe. Yeah. Knock those out, all Knock the summer them. festivals. And uh, then there's a lot of plans for autumn. Uh, not all has been set in stone yet, so we cannot go out with like, concrete plans for what's going to happen. But there's been talk about South America, there's been talk about another uh, tour coming back to the States, a support. Right. Yeah. And there's also been uh, talk about a special thing going on in Europe. It's going to actually be revealed uh, in two weeks, so I, I'm not allowed to say that yet as well. And there's going to be also, this we know, some special shows um, we actually just finished uh, a stripped down version of that at Kings. Okay, yeah. Which is like semi acoustic, built on ambience, having all the vocal melodies uh, a central thing, and uh, we're gonna make some acoustic shows based on that as well. Right. Are you guys releasing like a new album, like a, like a remix album of that? Yeah, it's gonna be entirely new. The songs are the same, right. but it does, the end result is nothing alike the album. Right. Because all the drums are gone, all the rhythm guitars yes. are gone. Yeah, see ya. <laughs> so, you know, it's just a totally different vibe. And the songs have like got a rebirth, so to speak. So, right. so it just fits an uh, acoustic uh, environment. Right. And we're gonna make a couple of shows like that where we also take our acoustic kind of look on uh, other old songs. Hmm, okay. You know, like yeah, a tone goes fucking acoustic. Goes yeah. acoustic, that's there it. You yeah. One show, yeah. yeah. When, do you, when do you guys think that the album will be released or...? The album will be out in uh, late September. Alright. Uh, on Casego, which is our label's oh, other imprint for right. more progressive stuff. Yeah, it's like where Porcupine Tree still yeah. is on. So okay. that makes sense. Yeah, yeah it does. Yeah. Um, any last words you want to say to our readers and listeners out there in the uh, age metal? Uh, we're happy to be uh, your refrigerator right now. <laughs> yeah, great cold Sweden. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Anders and Daniel, for talking with us. Thank you. Yeah.